Hello and welcome back to the channel. This video is about making gear cutters. I'm using the Eureka form relieving tool. The whole process is described in Ivan Law's excellent book Gears and Gear Cutting which is workshop practice series number 17. So let's make a start on making the Eureka tool. The first job is to cut the blanks for the mandrel and the indexing sleeve from 2 inch mild steel bar stock. I have two lathes in my workshop, one is a Myford Super 7 which I'll be using later and the other one is a Warco lathe. I tend to use the Warco for roughing out work because it's a lot more powerful than the Myford and I can get the roughing work done more quickly. Now for some marking out work. I'm using a surface plate made from a sheet of thick glass. I'm marking out the positions in the centres at each end of the work. With the centre positions marked out, I'm transferring the work to the milling machine to centre drill the positions. This will allow me to hold the work between centres in the lathe. The mandrel has a number of eccentric diameters machined onto it. Here I'm using the four jaw chuck and holding the outer end of the work in a lathe center. The first diameter I've machined is in fact concentric with the centers on the work so I can now hold it in a three jaw chuck. Again, supporting the outer end on a lathe center. Now for the bulk of the roughing out work. With the roughing out complete, the works now transfers to the more delicate Myford lathe for the finishing cuts. These eccentric diameters mean that I can no longer hold the work using the lathe centre. So I'm using a four jaw chuck and a dial test indicator to make sure the workpiece is correctly offset and parallel to the lathe axis. The 
I'm taking light cuts to ensure I don't disturb the work in the chuck. With the mandrel now complete, I can carry on with doing the finishing cuts on the indexing sleeve. The bore is first roughed out with a drill and then machined to the final diameter using a boring bar. This ensures the bore is concentric with the outer diameters on the work. and cutting the thread using a thread die chaser. I'm now holding the work on a stub mandrel to machine the remaining outside diameters. The stub mandrel ensures that these remaining faces and diameters are concentric or perpendicular to the axis of the workpiece. Checking for a perfect fit on the mandrel. Now transferring the three jaw chuck bodily to the milling machine and a dividing head to machine the slots for the ratchet. Machining the spanner flats on the indexing sleeve. I'm supporting the work on a parallel in the vise to ensure that the two flats are parallel to each other. The remaining parts of the Eureka tool have already been made. With all the parts complete, the Eureka tool is now ready for final assembly using a light layer of grease to ensure everything is running smoothly. The Eureka tool is now complete and ready for use. The next job is to make the button tools that will be used to form the correct profiles on the gear cutters. These are made of hardened steel buttons supported on a shaft. The diameter of the buttons and the separation of the buttons are important. These are shown in the table here, taken from Ivan Wall's book. The buttons themselves are machined from silver steel in the lathe.
The buttons are held on a mild steel holder made of rectangular bar stock. The buttonhole spacings are accurately set using the digital readout on the milling machine. It's necessary to grind a small slot between the buttons in order to give clearance for the cutter. Next, a 10 degree relief angle is ground onto the top face of the buttons. I should really be using a guard for the grinding wheel here. The buttons now need to be heat treated to give them the correct hardness. I'm heating them up to red heat using a blowtorch, and then quenching them in cold water. Once the buttons have been quenched, they'll be tempered in the oven at 200 degrees centigrade. Having got this far, we can finally make a start on the cutters themselves. This is the cutters in their finished state. The cutters are made from silver steel gauge plate. The first job is to grind out the blanks using a cut-off disc. Just for fun, I decided to turn the cutters to their correct diameter using the milling machine as a lathe. The cutter blanks are now transferred to a dividing head to have the holes in them drilled in the lathe. These holes form the first part of the clearance between the teeth on the cutter. There are 12 teeth on each cutter. Next, the cutter blanks are transferred to a dividing head on the milling machine in order to cut away the spaces between the teeth using a slitting saw. The cutter blanks are then brought to their correct thickness on the lathe. Before the teeth are form relieved, the profile is roughed out on them using the button tool. This removes the bulk of the metal, leaving just the final cuts to be taken on the Eureka tool. These shots give you an idea of the functioning of the Eureka tool to form relieve the gear cutters. The first job is to form relieve the outer edge of the cutter using a straight faced tool. At this stage the outer edge of the cutter is form relieved 
and all that remains is to form relieve the profile on each individual tooth. At this stage, each of the teeth on the cutters has been correctly formed and form relieved. The teeth now have to be sharpened using this special jig. The saucer wheel on the grinder sharpens the cutting face of each tooth. The final job is to harden the cutters using the same heat treatment method as before. The cutters are brought to a red heat, held at that temperature for a while and then plunged into cold water to quench them. I've removed the scale on the cutters by soaking them in spirit vinegar for a while. Next the cutters are put into an oven at 200 degrees to temper them. And the cutters are finally complete. I've made numbers 2 through to 7 cutters. I didn't make a number 1 cutter because this is for gears with very large numbers of teeth which I won't actually need. I hope you enjoyed the video, if you did please give it a like, subscribe to the channel and leave any comments, questions or suggestions in the comment section down below. See you next time.